Hello, and welcome everybody to Combat Saturday for May 23rd, 2020. I'm your host, DM Galabond. And in this episode of Combat Saturday, we are going to look at the history of the flail as a weapon in D&D. All right, well, let's go ahead and get on with that. Um, as we start, or we will start as we always do with 5th edition, uh, the flail in the current edition costs 10 gold. It's a fairly light weapon at only 2 pounds. And um, it doesn't really do a good job of describing what a flail is. If you're not familiar, a flail is basically a, a, a stick that has a chain and a weighted ball on the end. And really the only resource uh, out of all of the player's handbooks that gives you a good image of it is the fourth edition player's handbook. And it's this item right here uh, that's labeled as number 12. So it's got this uh, stiff handle here, uh, either made of metal or wood wrapped in leather and then a chain, and then a spiky ball at the end. Now, to be a proper flail, it can either have the spikes or just be a weighted metal ball. Uh, it doesn't have to be either one. As you can see, in 5th uh, edition, they consider it a bludgeoning weapon. So the spikes would make it more of a piercing weapon. So you can think of it as just having that weighted ball without the without the spikes on it. And like I said, it's only two pounds. So they uh, does a fairly decent amount of damage, 1d8. And that is because the energy comes from being able to get extra, uh, you know, extra speed with that chain to really whip that ball, uh, that metal ball, and whack somebody in the head or the knee or wherever with it. Okay, uh... The flail first appeared in AD&D or first edition D&D. It wasn't in the original rule set. And uh, there were two varieties of flails. Uh, there was a footman's flail, which cost you three gold, and a horseman's flail, which cost you eight gold. And um, the these flails, uh, let's see, okay. Uh, they had uh, different weights. The uh, weight in gold pieces, there's 10 gold pieces to a pound. So the footman's flail weighed 15 pounds, was about uh, 4 feet long, needed 6 feet to operate, had a speed factor of 7, and against um, small or medium creatures it would do 1d6 plus 1, and against large creatures it would do 2d4 damage. Now the horseman's flail was quite a bit lighter. It was only three and a half pounds. Um, the length was only two feet. You only needed four feet to operate it. And again, because you're um, you're on a horse, so you need a little bit lighter weapon, uh, you know, as opposed to when you're running around on the ground. Uh, slightly faster with a speed factor of six. And against smaller medium opponents, it does 1d4 plus 1. And um, same against large creatures. Okay, then in second edition, you still have a footman's flail and a horseman's flail. Uh, 15 gold and 8 gold, respectively. Uh, 15 pounds and 6 pounds, respectively. Um, Size. They're considered medium weapons, uh, do bludgeoning damage, uh, speed factor of 7 uh, for the footmans, and 6 for the horsemans, and then same, uh, almost identical damage. 1d6 plus 1, small and medium, 2d4 large, or uh, that's for the footmans and for the horsemans, 1d4 plus 1. For both the small and the large. Okay, then in third edition, uh, this broke it down a little bit more. Uh, you had uh, one-handed. Uh, 
from from martial weapons, the one-handed martial weapons would in would or one one-handed melee weapons. I'm sorry, would include the flail. Uh, cost eight gold pieces, one d six, one d eight times two, and again bludgeoning and weighed five pounds. And um, then you had two-handed melee weapons, um, which included two different types of flails. So there was a heavy flail that's 15 gold pieces, weighed 10 pounds, did 1d8 or 1d10 damage. And then in the exotic category of two-handed weapons, there's actually something called a dire flail. And a dire flail uh, is actually a shortened staff that has a flail on each end. So it's like a double weapon. So if you, um, you've seen um, you know, quarter staff fighting where people are spinning the staff around and you know, they can hit with both ends of the staff, just imagine, okay, a little bit shorter staff and then it has those chains with those metal balls on either end and fighting with that and you know it's like you're not careful <laughs> that could really hurt you as the wielder um, as much as it could hurt anybody you're trying to fight um, so th that's the dire flail and then uh, 1d6 1d6 and it and it's a 10 pound weapon so that's a heavy thing to be uh, fighting with as well. And, uh, you know, it just, third edition has uh, extra rules for everything. So, you know, you, uh, it, it uh, is considered a double weapon, so you can fight with it, but you incur all the normal attack penalties associated with um, fighting with two weapons. And then when using a dire flail, you get a plus two bonus on opposed attack rolls made to disarm an enemy. And then uh, with both the dire flail and the regular flail, you can use it to trip an opponent. And if you get tripped, there's a really kind of an interesting rule with that where the rules will actually allow you to drop your weapon in order to avoid being tripped yourself. So you basically give up your weapon and you and you don't trip. So then, hopefully, you have something you know at the ready, like a short sword or a dagger or something that you can use if your opponent tries to trip you and you have to drop your weapon. And then in fourth edition, as we said, um, you know this is the only one that actually gives us an image of the um, of the flail and. Um, Flail grants a plus two, a one-handed melee flail grants plus two bonus to proficiency, uh, 1d10 damage, 10 uh, gold pieces, weighs five pounds, and it's considered a versatile weapon, so you can use it either one-handed or two-handed. And then the heavy flail is two-handed. Uh, does 2d6 damage, weighs 10 pounds, and costs 25 gold. And then, let's see. Um, yeah, that's not exactly the same. Uh, spike chain is not exactly the same as a dire flail uh, from the uh, previous edition. All right, so that is going to do it for our discussion of the flail. Uh, if you like what we're doing here on this channel, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button uh, down below. Uh, click the bell. That'll let you know when we put new videos up. Uh, if you had a character that you played in a D&D &D campaign that, uh, you know, fought with a flail and have any cool stories about how you used it, that'd be great. Or as a DM, if you saw any really... Um, interesting ways that players used a flail uh, in a game that you ran it'd be great to uh, put those in the comments as well uh, also down in the description you'll find all the ways that you can follow me on social media uh, hope to see you back here for more videos and uh, we will uh, see you later thank you so much for watching and we will talk to you soon all right good night